we can no longer afford to put health care reform on hold. We can't afford to do it. It's time. There is nothing more fraught than health care because it is so personal and it is so intimate. And every political party that decides to take on health care in some massive, poorly understood way reaps both the backlash and, 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 and political retaliation. Americans are seriously worried that this is going to destroy the health care. This having. has been on the left's to-do list since either FDR or LBJ got it done. They've just been waiting, waiting, waiting. When we have the presidency and both houses of Congress, we are going to push this through. It's about too much power going to federal government. The whole point of this is to get everybody enrolled in the government health care From across the divide, Sarah Palin reappeared, wielding a new political weapon. She was a maven on Facebook, the original politician who saw that you could skirt the media and you could get the message out unfiltered, uncut to the public was Sarah Palin. She did that with Facebook. As more Americans delve into the disturbing details of the nationalized health care plan, our collective jaw is dropping. And we're saying not just no, but hell no. She exploited fear with a new phrase that went viral, death panels. The America I know and love is not one in which my parents or my baby with Down syndrome will have to stand in front of Obama's death panel. It wasn't true. She is the first of a generation of politicians who live in a post-truth environment. Steve Schmidt had also been a top campaign aide for John McCain's presidential run. He had pushed McCain to select Sarah Palin. And she was, and there's no polite way to say it, but a serial liar. She would say things that are simply not true or things that were picked up from the internet in this obliteration of fact from fiction, of truth from lie, has become now endemic in American politics, but it started then. 